Early start today, there's a hurricane coming. I got into the shop extra early today because in case you haven't heard, there's a hurricane coming. Uh, I've got one little project I can get done before the hurricane comes. Um, hopefully we won't be without power for too long so I can get cranking as soon as it's passed. Uh, but this is for a friend of mine who's actually, she's got her own stationary business and uh, we're working together to try to get her uh, print shop set up. But in the meantime, occasionally I'll print some work for her. So we were gonna do two color letterpress and when we got down to it, the letterpress gold just wasn't giving us what we needed. So we switched to foil, which has its own inherent challenges. One of the challenges with foil is that heated dyes, metal dyes expand. So you have to get the right amount of heat compensation in there so that when it expands, when it's too heat, somewhere around 200 degrees, it expands to fit the exact same size to register with letterpress plates. 
Uh, because we're under a tight timeline to get this out before the hurricane, um, we opted to drop a couple of the parts that uh, drop a couple of the parts that made for tight register, so that there was less to worry about. So I've printed the invitations, I printed the RSVPs, and now I'm working on the envelopes. All of these envelopes need to be opened up so I can print on the back flap. Everybody's got their own system, but I feel like mine works pretty well. Euro flap envelopes because they're a little bit deeper, you have a little bit more motion. Uh, but what I do is I hold the top stack in my hand and I try to keep my pinky underneath the bottom of the stack, and then I slide in under the flap and then just keep doing that motion, grabbing with my thumb the new flap on the stack. What that does is once we get to the end of it, all I have to do is that and the stack is open. If you were watching real close, you may have noticed I wasn't using crop marks on the copper plates for the invitation in RSVP. Uh, that wasn't on purpose. Uh, see, the thing is, the die maker assumes that you don't want crop marks unless you tell them you do because uh, more copper costs more money. Now, I found that the little bit of extra money that I pay to have full crop marks on the copper saves me tons of time and in turn, my clients more money than what it would take to actually get everything lined up without those crop marks. With the crop marks, I can know instantly whether things are lined up or not. This took a lot more time because I didn't have those. That's because I had my client order the dies and forgot to tell her they wouldn't put the crop marks in unless she asked for them specifically. We'll do the invitation envelopes first, so we're going to put the die in upside down so that we can print the flap upside down. Clearly, I don't have a really good technique for feeding envelopes. This will work for now. I've only got a couple hundred to do, so we'll make it work. Okay, what you just saw there was me being an idiot. Don't try that at home. The number one rule of hand feeding a press is don't chase the sheet. No sheet of paper is worth more than your hands. I have no clue what I was thinking. It must be hurricane brain, but do not try this at home. I don't know how, but I filled up the SD card before I finished the job. So I had to dump all that footage and here I am. Uh, I wanna go show you a little bit of what the weather's looking like with this hurricane coming in. Um, and then we still have like 24 hours before we start to see much of anything. Uh, but wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, how the job went and clarify a couple things. Uh, number one, this is what letterpress gold looks like, the darker color. Um, now I mixed this letterpress gold um, I have some tubes of letterpress gold. I need to buy some cans, but uh, I tend to like to mix it on my own anyway because I can pull out the right kind of gold for a project. And because we had already done something pretty light here, I wanted to use kind of a, a deeper gold, but um, letterpress metallics still aren't very metallic. And if that's the look you're going for, you're not gonna get what you want out of it. And so, uh, so my client, my friend was uh, at the shop when we printed the letterpress part of this and we did the gold and both agreed that for what she was looking for, she really needed to switch to foil. That's why she ordered those uh, copper dies, and uh, so that's the part that I printed today. So you'll see the difference, uh, the difference between gold foil and gold letterpress, uh, pretty huge there. Uh, we'll do this so you can see it maybe a little bit better. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that came out. RSVP envelope, RSVP in letterpress and foil stamping main envelope, which she's calligraphing. I'm still not sure if that's the right word, but calligraphing seems to be, right? Calligraphing? Um, and then the main invite card. This was uh, Gmund cotton. I've never printed on it before. It's actually a really nice paper. I'm not thrilled with how it foiled for me, which brings me to my last thing uh, about foil and about those envelopes. Essentially, uh, there are a bunch of shades of gold foils. There's well, let's start at the beginning. There's maybe half a dozen or so companies that sell 
foil for foil stamping that I'm aware of in the country. I'm sure there are more, but there are only a few that, that are in my sphere. Uh, one of them a couple years ago announced they're only taking minimum orders. Of, so they kind of knocked themselves out of the running for most of my projects. So that leaves a few and most of them carry a lot of golds, a few silvers, uh, one or two coppers, one or two rose golds, and then uh, specialty foils, pigment colors uh, uh, that don't have metallics in them, um, things like holograms, that kind of stuff. And so uh, I found a couple companies that I like. They're really responsive. They send stuff quickly. But the thing is, even though there's a handful of companies, a lot of those companies actually use the same foil from manufacturers, I'm, I'm assuming in China, and just rebrand it to their own. Um, and then on top of that, most of those foils come in multiple releases. Now the release is how easily the foil comes off the roll and onto your sheet. That's really important because if you have big areas of coverage, um, giant solids that you need to cover, you need a really easy release so that all the foil comes off and there's no little pinholes or uh, kind of faded areas where the foil didn't go onto the paper and stayed onto the, you know, the, the plastic backing. Um, if you're doing really tiny, fine text, you need a really tight release so that uh, the counters, the little holes in things like lowercase b's or a's or o's, so those don't fill up in that tiny little text. Um, sometimes you don't know which one you need until you're on press. You can get close, but sometimes one might not take you far enough. In fact, in this one, um, they told me it was their, um, their hard release but I don't think it was hard enough. And I need to find out if they have an even harder release. This is a company that I've, I've only started working with. Um, I'm not familiar with their, their naming scheme for these. And so uh, I have to find out if they have a harder release because you know this had some really tiny little text in it and things like in this little lowercase d and um, in some of the tiny letters, it just didn't quite get as um, clean a release as I wanted. Now, the great thing is, for the most part, you can take some cheesecloth after the fact and rub it along those and it cleans it up. I would always rather err on overfilling a little bit and using cheesecloth to clean it up as long as that works uh, than to underfill because you can't go back once it's trimmed and fix any of that. The only thing about that is then you've got a lot of handwork to do after the fact. So foiling for most printers is more expensive specifically because of all that stuff that goes into it. Inking is pretty cut and dry. Most uncoated papers take letterpress inks really well. And so there isn't quite as much variable involved. I mean, there's variable, but not to the same level with the foil because you've got heat, pressure, dwell time, and the foil release that all have to happen the right way to make things work. So I think this job went really well, but all things considered, it's hurricane prep day. I would have liked to take two or three more hours to work on it, to dial it in. Frankly, I would have liked to have had another few days to get a different foil in and try that one. But uh, it is what it is. I think it came out beautifully in the end, and uh, I can't wait to kind of see the rest of it all come together with my client and see what it looks like in the end. Man, it's kind of like the calm before the... Check this out. I don't think you can see him from here, but right over there, uh, down by the water, there's a guy with a drone. So let's see if uh, let's see what he does with it.